Hey everyone and welcome back to Roadside Coder. So in today's video, we're gonna learn how you can make your web page responsive by using features of CSS like responsive font sizes such as M and Rem. We'll see how we can set responsive widths and height with the viewport width and viewport height units and media queries to make your web page adapt to all the screen sizes. So let's get started. So we will start by creating two new files. First one will be for our HTML. And other one will be for our CSS. All right, so I'm gonna import boilerplate code by typing exclamation mark and pressing enter. So here we have got a boilerplate code for our HTML and let me import CSS real quick. There we go. Let me give it the title. All right, so before starting up, I would like to give it a few of the initial stylings. For example, margin will be zero and box sizing will be border box. Now this has nothing, nothing to do with our responsiveness. It's just a few of the initial styling that I like to give. So let's go to our body. And now first thing that I would like to demonstrate is responsive CSS font sizes. So I'm gonna create a new dev over here. So dev.container. And inside of it, I would like to create another dev with class name of text. And let's say inside of this, I write CSS responsive tutorial. All right, let's run this first. So I'm going to right click over here and press open with live server. Now, if you don't know what live server is, it's a v, uh, VS code extension. You can go right over here and search for live server and download it from over here. So let's see here's our web page opened. Let me just talk it to the side. All right, cool. Now let's get started. So first of all, we will discuss about M and Rem. What are M and Rem font sizes? So let's give some styling to our container. I'm going to give background color so that it's a bit visible. I'm going to give it cyan and text align has to be center. There we go. A little bit of padding of let's say five pixels and I'm going to give it a font size of 50 pixels. There we go. But why am I giving it pixels? I'm supposed to teach you EM and REM, right? Okay. So let me tell you the difference between M and REM. But first of all, what I would like to do, I would like to define a global font size for this page. So font size going to be 25 pixels. So this is going to be a global font size for our web page. And this is going to be the font size for this particular container. So if I go inside of this container, and as you can see, we have created this text dev right over here. And I'm going to go and write text. And now I'm going to give it a font size of one EM. Nothing changed. It's because one EM is equal to, let, let's first of all talk about what's the difference between M and REM. So when we give the font size of M, it is with respect to this, its parent container. So M is in respect to its parent containers. For, for example, if the parent container has 50 pixels of font size, so one EM will equal to 50 pixel. If I reduce it to let's say 20 pixels, the one EM will be equal to 20 pixel. But watch when I put it rem. One rem will be equal to 25 pixels. That is rem is in respect to the global font size of our HTML page. So let me save it. There we go. It has gotten shrinked down to 25 pixels. So this is the difference between M and rem. Let me put it back to M. All right. So these were M and rem. But what about viewport width and viewport height? So what is viewport width and viewport height? So viewport width is the width of the screen that you're currently in. 
it can be your phone screen your desktop screen your monitor screen anything and we put height is the height of your current screen size so let me demonstrate you real quick so let's say if the font size is 10 v w so it's going to be the 100 percent of the viewport width if i put it like 5 viewport width it's going to adapt to only half of this screen size so let me show you if i make this web page bigger you can see it's adapting to the screen size and it's making the font size bigger in respect to that so it's in respect to the width of the web page similarly you can set viewport height as well it will be also be in the respect to viewport of the height of the page let me show you so viewport height is 5 vh and as i decrease the web page height you can see the font size is also getting decreased and increased all right cool so that was m ram and viewport height and width now let's talk about what max width and min width or max height or min height is so when we set for example max width to be let's say 600 pixels so you can see it has given it 600 pixels but it's telling it that it has to maximum be 600 pixels it can be less than that but it can't be more than that so if you see if i reduce the web page you can see it's adapting to it but not if we remove the max keyword from here if we keep only width you can see that it's going to be overflown there you go you can see it's going to be over it's it's overflowing out of the web page so what's the solution for this we have to put max width or min width so min width what does min width do min width tells that it has to be minimum of this but it can be maximum of whatever the size that you allow it to do similarly the case is with max height and max width as sorry max height and menu height as well now let's check out what media queries are so i'm gonna go over here and create few of the divs so let's say dev dot type i'm gonna create it four times first one will be for phone second for tablet third for desktop and fourth for widescreen all right here we go you can see all of these four are over here now you might be wondering why did i write all of these so don't worry i'm going to show you just in a moment all right here we are so let me give this text a few of the generic styles first sorry i mean type class so display is going to be none it's not going to display first and height is going to be 25 viewport height and font size is going to be 2 rem so rem as you might remember is in respect to this our html let me remove this display none first as you can see all of these are being displayed now uh, putting back the display none now what i want to do over here whenever it's in the size of a phone it should display the phone and whenever it in the size of a tablet it should display a tab it should display the tablet text and so on first of all let me remove this max width from over here now let's start writing our media queries so to write our media queries what you have to do is you have to write at media this is the keyword that we use and inside of braces or parenthesis we write max width and then the value so let's say 500 pixels so what's what is saying is if the web page is 500 pixels or less then do this so what are we going to do we're going to take our phone class and make its display block now watch when i go to 500 pixels there we go the phone is right here but if we go beyond it disappears so this is the power of media queries let me give it a background color as well so that it will be easier to distinguish yep that's right now next i would like to write for the tablet so media so now there are two parameters over here 
if it's more than 500 pixels and less than 700 pixels. So I'm going to write something new that is min width. So min width if 501 pixels, if it's more than 500 pixels and max width is less than 700 pixels, then do this. So tablet, I'm going to write display block and some background color. Now let's test it out. There we go. And if we go beyond 700 pixels, it disappears again. You see, as we go beyond 500 pixels, the phone disappears and the tablet reappears. All right, now let's do the same for desktop and widescreen monitor as well. So here's for desktop that is 700 pixels. If it's more than 700 pixels and less than 1000 pixels. And for the widescreen, if it's goes if it goes beyond 1000 pixels then do this now let's test it out real quick so we are beyond 1000 pixels so it's displaying widescreen desktop let's inspect it and let's try it out you can see widescreen we are in desktop tablet phone so this is the power of media queries in css it lets you adapt to the particular screen size that you want it to be now let's see a few more of some use cases of these media queries. So I'm going to go back to my HTML document and I'm going to create a few of divs. So div dot blocks. And inside of this blocks, I'm going to create, let's say seven div with the name of block into seven. All right, there we go. Now for this block div, that is all of these devs right here. I'm going to give it styling. Or oh, let's say background color, tomato, some width of 100 pixels and height of 100 pixels. Whoops. There it is, but you can see it's it's in the column mode. So let me give margin first so you can distinguish between them. There we go. You can see all of our blocks from top to bottom fashion. So I'm going to give their parent div that is blocks a class of display flex. Now I guess that's better. There we go. All right. So what we want to do is if the width of web page is less than 700 pixels. I want these blocks to be in the column mode. So I'm going to write a media query. Max width. 700 pixels. And blocks is going to be flex direction of column. Let's see. There we go. You can see right here. It's adapting to the screen size. Now, if you don't know what Flexbox is, you can go and watch this video right here. I've explained full of Flexbox in this video in just 20 minutes. So you can find the link in the description and at the I button on the top. Also, let me give it the styling to the block. And let's say width is going to be 92 viewport width. There we go. It looks really pretty. As you can see, as the screen size gets smaller, it goes into the column mode from the row mode. So there are a lot of use cases for media queries when it comes to creating our website and making them responsive. Also, if you want to learn how to build a responsive nav bar, you can go and check out this video. The link will be in the I button above or in the description. Now, let me talk about one more thing. These media queries have a property called only screen and so what's going on over here is it's telling that only apply this media query on this particular stuff that is on screen or if we can do all. 
so there can be many keywords over here for example all screen print or speech so let me just show you if i do media only print let me just do it on the tablet over here print and so if i go on over here and you can see in the tablet mode it doesn't appear if i go smaller the phone appears but the tablet doesn't appear because it's only going to show whenever we print this screen so let me go and press print there we go you can see the tablet is over here but when we put it in screen mode only the screen mode now you can see the tablet is over here but when we go to print you can see there is nothing over here because we put only screen but if we put all and then again do print you can see it's right over here and here as well so thank you all for watching this video if you find it helpful just give it a huge fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on it really motivates me to create more such awesome videos for you guys so thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye